Hi everyone. This episode is for Pilates teachers who may be working with older female clients in your studio. You might be wondering what exercise choices to make. So I've chosen a few for you to get started with. So in working with older female clients, some things to maybe consider and think about, kind of a continual reminder for them. Uh, breathing. We need to de-stress some of these women. They might be uh, feeling stressed in life and with just environmental issues and things. Axial elongation, so meaning from the tailbone to the top of the head. This is great for posture. It goes back to breathing because it opens up the lung and upper rib cage cavity. We want mobility of the spine and through the hips and the lower back. As aging starts to set in, these are areas that do start to get and feel a little stiff. We want to energize these women and empower them to keep working out and feeling good and confident. So one of the first exercises that I'd like you to try and give, give them is just a simple breathing exercise. So placing the hands on the side of the rib cage up high. This is where the lungs are, they're not down here. And you're just gonna do a light pressure of your hands. You can do this on your client or have them do this for themselves. And just have them sit comfortably. I'm on the floor, but you can sit in a chair or on the table somewhere. And you're just gonna focus the breathing with the axial elongation of their spine. So nice breath in through their nose. And just a nice, simple exhale. So again, you're encouraging breath. You're encouraging this to uh, calm them down, to focus their mind. Get them in touch with the center of their own body. And I don't know, three to five repetitions to get them started. Let them feel the expansion of their ribs. Let them empower that for themselves. So the next exercise we're going to work on is the pelvic curl. And I'm lying down on the floor for this one. And uh, you will want to, depending, they may want a little cushion for the back of their neck or not, depending on their alignment and that you can study a little bit more in detail. I'm going to show it without the pillow first or without the towel. And as the person starts to get a little older and go through life, they, their backs start to stiffen and get a little, little less mobile. So pelvic curl, again, you're focusing the articulation of the spine and you're giving that sense of the rolling up and down of the back. And you can also introduce some posture um, correction here and have them open up through the collarbone, keep their arms pressed down. And again, you're thinking and telling them, mobilize. You want to energize and articulate as many sections of your spine as you can. They don't have to come up too high to get the benefit out of this. They might only be able to get just in through their lower back. And that might feel really good for them just to start with this low off the floor movement. As they get stronger, you can go higher. You also want to tell them this is for toning because the older gals still want to tone their backside to strengthen in through their back muscles. And if in some way, this is a little bit of a balance exercise as well. So again, pelvic curl for mobilizing primarily. Side lying. This one you will want to use a little pillow or a towel. I've got a towel here. And I'm going to start with my arm long and the towel right between my head and my arm. Older gals need balance work. And although I'm down on the ground, this is a form of balance. And you'll see why. If you start with their legs out straight and just have them locate the side of their pelvis so that they're really on the whole side line of their body, very often they'll interpret it and they'll be back here somewhere. But that's not really on their side. So when they are on their side, there's a slight feeling of rolling forward and that's the right place to be. And they're gonna focus on balancing in that position. When they're in the right place, they'll probably start to feel the workout across their abdominal wall and into their back muscles. Okay, so there it again, we get that center work. The elongation through the top and the bottom of the body and balance and concentrate. So exercise choices that you can do from here are just simple little lift of a leg and lower. So bringing in the concept of working their hip joints and strengthening the muscles around the side of their hip and their low back. I'm just showing a couple exercises or choices with each one. You can do two legs at the same time. So this requires a lot more strength, a lot more balance and control, and lower. But they have to concentrate on staying long and balanced, so putting their brain to work with these exercises, and down. And they'll, they'll feel the tone and the any aesthetic workout, uh, the concept of their, their exercise as well. So I'm gonna bend the knees and show a really nice one for hips. Again, it's opening, closing. You see these in a lot of traditional Pilates classes. Why these? This is for external rotators. As we age, we start to turn in and go into internal. 
and gravity is forcing us down and in. So this is working the opposition of that, pressing the hip out, the femur out. You can always lift, holding there, and add little circles. This is great, again, to feel the work in the thighs and the glutes. But again, it's the hip joint, really strengthening that joint. This is so important for all women, but especially as we start to age. And I'm making sure to go both directions with the hip circle. Huge concept for me is hip extension. So what I'm gonna do is take that working leg and reach it behind. And that's, I tell the gals this is like walking, uh, taking a really long walk and their stride. And then taking the arm into an oppositional reach. They love the stretch. It's a great place to focus on some breathing. Again, that feeling of length and strength, but then you can start adding little movements through the leg having them concentrate on their center, pulling their navel to spine, all of our Pilates concepts. Here we go. And you can lift and do pulses. You can do circles. You can get creative with this, but the concept is the hip extension to open up this line in this joint and then bringing it back in. Don't forget to do both sides. I'm not going to show that right now. So one other con uh, big one is back uh, strength and posture and specifically right around the shoulder blade. So this, I think, is best to have a little towel or pillow, so I'm gonna put that here. I'm going face down, so I won't look at you for this one. And I've just got my forehead on it. You can have their hands either right by their shoulders, or if their shoulders feel okay to have their arms long. I'm actually gonna show you here with the hands right out the side of my eyes. So the scapula retraction, why this is so important. Gravity is forcing shoulders forward, Women are getting slumped shoulders this way. Right away, as I'm flat, I want to just move those shoulders back and down the back. So there is some squeeze that's happening around, just say, the bra line. That's an exercise in of itself, and you can release. Get them started with their scapular retraction, and then start to add an additional float of the head. There's the axial elongation again, out the head and out the tail and bringing that down. In between each one, go ahead and let them relax so they feel the contrast of shoulders back and down. The float for a little extra work and work out really and strengthening for the upper back. Have them lift their arms and then you can lower the whole concept down. We'll do just one more. Scapular retraction, little head float, and arms. I'm just gonna hold and you can have them hold Ask them to visualize the posture that they might be interested in having. A really nice long neck. And lowering down. A great exercise to strengthen primarily the upper back. If they're ready, someday they might be able to move more into a traditional swan. And coming down, you'll know when they're ready to, to work on that exercise. And this is another one for balance. So I'm coming on to all fours, my hands and my knees. And a lineup for these gals, everybody, is shoulders right over the wrists. Now you'll see often that they'll uh, get started possibly in a form like this. Just see if you can go back to axial elongation, sometimes even balancing a stick on the back of their body, across their head and uh, back to their tailbone. And I'm going to go with a few different things in this position, so more mobility, which would be the cow and the cat. So here's the cat. You're again emphasizing on moving the spine, breathing, feeling the abdominal muscles tone and pull in. Remember, a lot of these older gals haven't moved much. If they're fit, they've moved a lot, but sometimes you'll get a very deconditioned body, and this is a brand new experience for them. You want them to feel successful. They might get tired on their wrists, so give them a little break now and again and sit back. Tell them this is great for bone loading because it is. It's a weight-bearing exercise on their arm and their wrists. You might want to just incorporate one leg extension, the hip extension. You can add leg lifts. You can do both sides, of course. If they're really showing signs of strength and control and balance, you can have them stand with both feet. I would suggest one at first. An um, important one is ankle flexibility. So you want to rock on the ankles a bit. This is the ankle pumping. Continues to load their wrists. 
And you're getting that nice sense of length in through the spine. And don't forget to do both sides. All right, so a couple other things that are very important for your older female client is their sense of balance and being steady on their feet. Um, flexibility of their ankles is really important as well. So I'm standing with my feet just apart, uh, parallel. I'm using a dowel or a gondola pole. You can use a broomstick or just any old stick is fine. They may not need this, but if their balance is really shady um, and they're not confident, let them hold on to this or stand against a wall. So all you're simply doing is the, the heel lifts up and down. Just tra transferring weight to the front of the foot. So this works our balance, our coordination a little bit. Focus, reintroduce, and uh, bring them back to axial elongation for added posture emphasis. You can do one foot, so heel down, and then the opposite heel down. You're going to work on their alignment, so from their hip and their knee and their ankle, making sure they're not cheating their alignment, rolling in or rolling out. So the hip hinge concept is incredibly important for older female clients. Um, I'll show you here. So I'm just going to point my knees straight ahead. I'm hinging at my hip joint, bending the knees slightly. So this, what this is doing is loading the back muscles posturally here. The, again, the strength in through the legs and the hips. And you can have them hold, or you can have them move through it, which would be something like this, a bend, a hinge, and unhinge and straightening. Doesn't have to be fancy, but this will be a lot of work for them. You'll, you'll see some interesting deviations in their pelvis. They may hinge and like that. So again, if you think about posture with these clients, you wanna emphasize that length from head to tail. You can have them pulse. You'll get creative, but the concept is the hip hinge. And then lastly, have them stand on one leg. Just standing is hard. Uh, you want them to feel successful and coordinated and balanced. That's what they're looking for. Make sure you do both sides. And you can add some variations, especially if they're holding on to a stick or a wall, lifting a heel off, and off the ground. You can have them close their eyes. You can have them turn their heads and look around for vestibular training. You can find more resources about these classes on Pilates anytime, but these are just a few examples for your senior client. Thank you for watching this episode of an exercise program designed for you, the Pilates teacher, to work with your senior or over 50 clientele. Please subscribe to our channel. Don't forget, it's very important to us. And if you're interested in watching more full-length classes of Pilates and workouts and workshops, come to PilatesAnytime.com. We'll see you soon. Pilates Anytime is a virtual Pilates studio where you can take real classes with real students. We offer classes at all levels and we add about five new classes every week. Pilates Anytime is always here for you, 24 hours a day, seven days a week.